So, good morning. Metaphysical world. First of all, what is the definition of the word meta? Meta beyond, we know. Beyond the physical world. Something is beyond that. And somehow, whenever we want to know about this word, it seems as we are almost leaning towards astronomy, astrophysics. It's an independent world up there, beyond the physical world. Where is the human being? So, it seems as if we are independent. You know, this is when you study this kind of uh, branch from philosophy. Anthropomorphism is the same thing. The link of human being with nature, with the universe, this is how it is. Theology, you study God and stuff. Everything is intellectualized. This is beyond. In Arabic, I don't refer to what is written, what is uh, translated. They use it the same thing. They say a metaphysical word, the alam, the metaphysical. It's totally wrong word. You are taking the word as it is. In Latin, you're using it in Arabic. That's not a translation. Unlike in Sufism, when you speak about this, they don't call it metaphysical world. You have this world, the physical world. We have metaphysical world. And we have the world of the divine names. The physical world is Alim al-Mulk. The metaphysical world, we don't say metaphysical words, which is in Arabic, Alim al-Malakut, which include both the angels and the jinn. This is the world is in a constant state of metamorphism. And you have the world of the divine names, which is Alim al-Jabarut. Why do I have to know about these things? For us, this is the world of the physical world. It is stagnant, dormant, we know, doesn't move. We live here, even though we are wrong. This physical world that seems to be dormant, stagnant, it was considered like this during the Newtonian era by physicists. This world that seems to be, which is what they studied about the atom, the last element that cannot be divided anymore. This is about matter. Recent science, quantum mechanic, quantum physics, and a very deep, sophisticated computers, microscopes, they, they realized that the atom, the one which was like a bull, cannot be divided, is itself divided into other particles and known particles. What is strange again behind this is divided they are moving, sometimes straight line, sometimes in a curve. Okay, this matter that you see, it's dormant, stagnant, is itself moving. God, what is this? Those particles, where is, their, where, where is their final destination? They don't know, they ignore it. In physics, they call it the gluon, and defined. So, this is the physical world. What about the metaphysical world? As I said, my, uh, my opinion, uh, okay, as a simple novice, I'm not rectifying other people's errors i'm trying to rectify no 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 it's just the way i see it <laughs> this word about metaphysical is there whatever metaphysical world is first of all it's not collective it's not a world that is shared by everybody whether from the concept of studying it studying it or from the concept of being there 
They study the metaphysical world is a world that's independent. That's humans being reflection. It's a human being's reflection. The human being uh, reasons that are in a constant state of metamorphism, as I said. The physical world, here we go, it is here. Alim al-Mulk. Al-Malakut, which is the Alim of the angels and the jinn. Why do we have to know about these things? For most of people, when you speak about angels or you speak about jinn, whatever, it is as is if it's like you know, you're talking about a fairy tale or something. There is a link with human being, that's why you have to know about them. There is an identity of the angels, you don't understand them entirely. You have an idea about how they behave. And you know about Satan, how he behaves. I mean, the jinn. Even though among the jinn, they are believers. The jinn doesn't change. The jinn, he doesn't change as it seems to most of people when he has this power to be incarnated in, on, in any kind of image. He can fit, he can get incarnated in an image. But it's not his result, by the way. I don't know, it's something very important. Wherever he sees a stagnation, wherever he sees something that doesn't move, he gets incarnated there. Where? In the idols, statues, images, where there is a soul. Image that has a potential to have a soul human being, animals, etc. I'm not talking about trees, whatever. Even though, deeply speaking, even trees, wherever there is a soul there, but let's not go far. I'm talking about animals, statues, he gets there. Why? He is scared of the uncertain, of the uncertainty. He is scared of of the unusual, something that he will surprise. That's why he just look for stagnation. Try to understand what we are doing. He is scared of the eternal. The eternal will lead him to see the unusual. He wants to, to eternalize the stagnant. Any idea, you know, idea, let's say, let's just speak about compassion. He tried to give an image to compassion and then to iconize it and get incarnated there. Heroism, it's always in the dragon. Let's just put it in a dragon that symbolizes heroism and he gets incarnated there and he is there. That's why. In monotheism, it's prohibited all the time, unlike what's going on today. All three. I don't say individuals. I'm talking about what's going on about the majority. Uh, statues, icons everywhere. These are the reflection of the signals, particles that you ignore. Vibes refer reflecting back to the nervous system, to the psyche, and it gets sealed off. That's it. And a person is living in a labyrinth without realizing it especially to the young kids. They live all with this kind of like idols completely, especially, you know, speak about the Christian world. Uh, Christians, whatever, Jewish people, Muslims, the same. Uh, the world of the East, forget it, polytheism. Everything is icons, idolizing things, icons, and then they don't know how they affect the human being. Because the emotions potentially Primordially speaking, they navigate all the time and they, you know, they always seek the truth. As I said, the jinn, which is Satan, I'm talking about Satan, there is no work, a holographic image that is resulted from him. No, he gets incarnated. Now, let's go to a human being vis-a-vis. The jinn, Satan. There is a difference between someone 
images a holographic image we're not talking about a holographic is resulted from the self and another one that is visualized as a simulation that doesn't have an origin from him and he gets incarnated he claims it that's a big difference this is what i'm saying i'm saying satan he fears the unusual that's why he wants to temporize from temporary if the verb is correct just to pulverize and just to give you another image and you live always in the past you live always in these nostalgic images of album pictures etc there's nothing to live a person fears to see the unusual or to see you know to live or to work for that results a holographic image is not about the physiognomy i'm talking of holographic image that is displayed all the time according to the person's behavior actions in this terrestrial world that's why the magic the black magic sorcery it's not my topic god did not give a lot of details explaining a lot of things about this because it's a person's responsibility he they said it doesn't touch the believer only slightly the believer is doesn't have a stagnation doesn't have in his psyche he is always constant state of metamorphism he is living stages in this life unlike others the black magic it touches the person because he has a stagnation in his psyche he lives with something he doesn't want to change he doesn't want to accept he is he was mistaken in order to change the next step in the future you have to admit that you were mistaken how can you change a future if you don't accept you don't uh, you know recognize your previous mistakes getting to the angels what kind of definition do we know about them they were created from nor light it's not it's not nor nor is light within itself and it is illuminating for others that's what is a nor a nor you say a light this one is a light i have a lamp over here this is a light the nor no it's light within itself and it is opening to you wherever you walk if you have this predisposed nature these are the angels on dire it seems as they live for human being but god gave in the quran snapshots about them the first thing you know the first thing he said they don't interrupt god when he speaks it's not like us the student the teacher i mean the student the kid the pupils they don't know that life i'm not talking about studies life all life is do not interrupt listen god said they don't interrupt him they look at that the next big big quality i don't know how to say magnificent you know marvelous they accept that they are inadequate in front of god's knowledge subhanaka is a sort of like glorifying god with astonishment that there is always something after when it comes to knowledge unlike the student we when we study we study for the stagnation we don't study for opening doors these are signals these are snapshots about the angels about the jinn okay what we are our topic not here about that our topic is about the metaphysical world as i said earlier about the word in latin and arabic what the god mentioned about he didn't mention about the world and it is not collective by the way he named it kitab he said the book 
He used Kitab. What is the book? Where you archive everything. It's not an open book like this. With pages. Yes, it is a book. The whole archives of the whole life of the believer is there. The Day of Judgment, when he sees his book, he will be given his book to read it, to see it. It's not reading. Seeing, reading, living those events again. When it is happens, you will live them in a fraction of a second. When it is sadness, you live them. But we're not talking about the Day of Judgment. We're talking about metaphysical world. When he described the book of the right one, right people, and those on the left. He said, Kitab al-Abrar ala fi illiyin. Al-Abrar, good people, righteous people, you know, good believers. Kitab, their books. Their book, he said, Kitab al-Abrar ala fi illiyin. You know, illiyin, it's not at the top, al-A'la. He didn't say in height, like he said about Al-A'raf. Illiyin in Arabic, even the translation is not, they just wrote Illiyin in the Quran, in English or French. Illiyin is escalation, is exponentially going into the state of metamorphosis and changing for the better, for expansion. That's what it means. Exponentially, it's like climbing, escalating, getting bigger for the good, you know, without interruption. That's what it means. In Arabic, the word ma adrak. Do you know what does it mean? Wama adrak. It's like you have seen something. He mentioned the word, and then he said. You should know what's going on. You must know. Like you say in English, such a beautiful, oh, something must see. Here you're talking about state of astonishment. Astonishment what you have seen just initially, a few seconds before. What you have seen. What you have perhaps admired. It's just a specimen. It's an atom from, or like a drop from its ocean. It's a tip of an iceberg. وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا إِلِّيُّونَ You know, it's something, it's more than what you can, you know, a rational mind can possibly visualize. When he spoke about the orders, he said, كتاب الفجار, the wicked. الفجار لفي سجين. Those people in a constant move, look, flux. These people, سجين is from prison. It's not penitentiary. Penitentiary, they teach you. And they just give you some kind of like this for noble people, rich people. When I go to, the, they didn't pay taxes, so they don't go to the jail. And uh, to, to the to the jail, say penitentiary, is a kind of like you know very good comfort over there. But Swadis are supposedly they are in jail. So no, no, that's a sijin. It's the same thing. It's getting smaller, narrowed with torture. But who is doing this? You know, the pleasure, happiness or sadness, it's the person, human's being. It's a human's being results. He is the one responsible for his actions. Are we, have we spoken or given any kind of definition about the metaphysical world? What I'm going to say, perhaps, you know, well, let's just say, put it on the table. Do you know count how many neurons synapse here? Okay, let's not just waste the time. Trillions. We're talking about billions, trillions. If you go exactly, you want to know the number of galaxies, you're going to find exactly similar. Why we have to know about these things? That is your potential world. I mentioned this in front of some people. They study neurology. They smile, they laugh, out of joke. Look at that. You know what I'm saying? Look at that. They, they just refute it with a very kind of intimidation. 
I didn't mention it far. I didn't go far. I just mentioned something like this. They were neurologists. It's in neurology. So they said, how can that be? But why? He is waiting for someone to bring science. You know I'm saying? Well, God mentioned it. Science. You know, what is a science? A science, it has to come from someone else. Why can't you just have a God to think about these things? I mentioned it one time. I said, my interpretation to science is when it is in, in a mystery. You are seeking the truth. You are a scientist. You found or you didn't find, that's fine. doesn't matter. You are a scientist seeking the truth. God did not ask you to find the truth. He's asking you to seek the truth. Science, by the time it comes from its world of mystery to or its visible, to its interpretation, to its parameters where it is between in a logic, because, therefore, and such, which implies, I myself, I no longer call it science. I call it a monopole and we are executants. Anyway, getting back to neurons or talking about the synapse and the number, the parallel number in the galaxies. What the person is doing, this is what is the metaphysical. It's not a metaphysical word, it's independent there. Now, one few words. What is the berzakh? Is the interspace between this world and the next world. You ask the majority, they tell you people that the best of them, they tell you people are unconscious up to the day of judgment. This is the best believer, could be Muslim or whoever. That's totally, totally wrong. That's the beginning of the reanimation, the beginning of the truth. Closing the eyes, that's the beginning. A person is not going to his grave. He's going to the state of consciousness. Now, how long does it take for a couple to have that physical encounter before the orgasm? Go to the extreme, one hour. How long does it take to the baby to be developed his biological composition in the uterus in a woman's womb? Nine months, excluding prematurely delivered. You see this period? when you compare it to the period of the physical encounter. It's not. See the period that we're spending here, how long? 100 years, go to the extreme. <laughs> Don't tell people you're gonna leave this world before, ah, please. Ah. So 100 years, what is 100 years to the eternity? It's nothing. It is nothing. What the person is doing here is preparing the development in the uterus of the his metaphysical world, in the womb of his metaphysical world. The person who consumed his age, that's you can say death, but the death is a painful feeling. It's not death in conscience. No, 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 no. It's a painful, especially if a person did a lot of the wicked person. He will be really, really. So, the one who made in this world is all temptation. In Arabic, say, you know, you make an effort to achieve, but hey, the world is the world of clashes. al adad al adad is clashes. It's a duality. Everything is contradicting you. Try to do, I don't know, you go on the top of the mountain, someone is going to come and bother you. <laughs> That's what it is. So, the good and evil both are in this world. So you are constantly, the person is making an effort by the time he lives to do something good. By the time he lives this world, he will continue. It will become, you don't call it autogenic. You know, no, no, no. But it will be, that's the power, willpower that he prepared here. It will be energized by God at that moment and he will see a lot of things. Someone wishes, for instance, to, uh, I don't know, to, to study, to memorize something, to do good. All these temptations, these efforts, this world, he was like that. He will continue and achieve them. The day of judgment, he will stand with something unbelievable, like, you know, the charity. He didn't have, he did his effort. If just a penny is some kind of like, I don't know, 50 cents, nothing. But in his mind, a psychic world linked to the metaphysical world, he said, I wish if I had more. 
the 50 cents it goes it will be it will increase in a stock market of goodness then he will find it the 50 it becomes a hundred and a hundred thousand and thousands bill million and keep going to the point when he stands there he will find it like a mountain he wonders he said i didn't give this this is the metaphysical world but who changes the metaphysical world i no you don't change it you are in a state of two states in this world a transmitter a receptor if you live a life as a receptor i'm talking vis-a-vis -vis the creator not talking when you teach or you give whatever you know we speak whatever like transmitter the listener is a receptor you know every action in this world is transmitter receptor accepting when you live as a receptor as i said about the angels they don't interrupt him they listen you know the divine names what the mala you know we said the physical world we say and then we say the divine names you had why do you have to know about things because God conscience, we don't refer consciences to God, it's to ourselves. It's because of God's see it as a laser. Who is responsible to generate this laser to your conscience? I am responsible to generate the laser. That's weird. I am responsible. You are with the creator too. The laser where is it coming from from there where there there is no there there is the everywhere that is the expansion of the emotions coming from everywhere we refer it to the heights because god you know that's why that is what is giving you so these divine names they affect you memorize them that's wonderful but they have an impact an effect in this existence the existence is surrendering to God's name voluntarily or involuntarily. That's in the Quran. And to God has prostrated all creatures, those the inhabitants of heaven and earth. Voluntarily and involuntarily. You breathe, you inhale the oxygen and the exhale the, the CO2. Voluntarily or involuntarily, you like it or not. But if you admit that something is coming from the Creator, this is the difference. Listen, wish you the best. Thank you for your attention and I see you soon.